know who I am. Anything you say, Lee. Anything you say. It's official. What's up YouTube? It's your boy Thomas back again with another rendition of Truth Be Told. Now here lately we've just been with the big news going on, the whole Trump raid bullshit. And it's literally, they're constantly trying to make up shit for the reason why they did it. Uh, they've literally made up shit to try to get Trump in prison many times the FBI is being used by the Democrats and they've proven this over and over you know with the Russian collusion and all that shit and then they say oh we need to back up our you know FBI you know our, our cops and blah 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 but yet they were all for defunding and all that shit. Uh, you know, when the left was rioting and all burning places and killed like 24 people. But yet, you know, it's a whole different story when they go after conservatives. Always is. Now, I've stated before, I hate politics. I can't stand politics because I think everyone in government is corrupt as fuck, including the FBI. Uh, they've proven it several times, especially when they made up shit about the whole Russia, Russian thing, and you know them, you know, literally faking warrants and subpoenas, you know, during that whole thing, the January 6th, where one person. One person died compared to the 24 and the riots of 2020. So, all you leftists can go fuck off with that. Oh, it was an insurrect. No, it wasn't. It was literally them just fucking walking into the building. And guess who's the ones who let them in there? The FBI. Undercover. Pretending that they were you know, fuck it, whatever. It's all a bunch of bullshit, every bit of it. They're scared to run against this man in 2024 because they know Trump will win by a landslide and they just fucked up because they made it even more of a win for him. So, whatever. Ridiculous shit. Uh... That's that's all the big news that's been going on. It's just been going on nonstop without them talking about that shit. When we've got other priorities to worry about, and the Democrats need to fucking just leave the White House, leave the fucking you know House of Representatives, and shit, because there's a storm coming. And they know it. They know they fucked up with all the inflation and all that other bullshit. But regardless, like I said, I hate politics. I don't consider myself conservative. I'm not on the right. I don't consider myself uh, like full-on libertarian. I'm not on the left. I sure the fuck don't agree with all the far leftists. They're fucking wackos. Um, I consider myself more a conservatarian. I'm like in the middle. You know, I think there's some liberal ideas that are are good, and then, uh, but not many. And then I believe that there's quite a bit of conservative ideas that are good. So I, you know, you gotta have a balance. You know, that's the whole point of debating, and the whole point of you know having choice to go on which way you want to go with. 
within your community. You know, but the far left don't do that. They want you to agree with them, and if you don't, they're going to come after you. At least the zero zero one percent crazy loons of the of the you know far left, the feminists, the uh, you know the uh, zero point one percent of the alphabet community. Because believe it or not, not all gays fucking believe in that bullshit of the. 0.001% of the alphabet community. They're pretty pissed off that they're trying to tell them that they're representing them. In fact, they fucking screamed at Disney for fucking trying to tell them that that's how they think too. But anyways, that's a whole different subject. That's the big news. Alright. Let's move on. Um, now... I've watched The Amazing Race Canada one season of it before and I watched one season of Amazing Race Asia once before. I know I have or I've seen bits and pieces of them both. Um, now they do have an Australia which I like but they tend to stick in Australia. The, of course, the American version of the Amazing Race, they go all over the world. And they hardly stay in the United States, except for at the beginning at the end of each season, which I like. Um, however, just recently, I got done watching all seven seasons of Amazing Race Canada. However... They're working on number eight right now. And I'll wait till they're finished with that. And then I'll just binge watch. Because that's what I usually do with The Amazing Race. I binge watch the whole season. Uh, same thing with Asia. I just watched all four seasons of Amazing Race Asia. Now, they're fixing to come out with part five. About the same time around this year. As the American Amazing Race is going to come out with their newest season. So I'll, eventually I'll get around to reviewing that too. But Canada. Canada tends to stay in Canada. Like they do have a few episodes in the seasons. All the seasons. Uh, the first seven. Where they will go up to a different country. They will do one clue in the fucking country and then return right back to Canada. It's like, I don't care to see, you know, Canada. They're supposed to be going outside of Canada to race in the different countries, not just fucking Canada. Give me a fucking break. And then John, the redhead guy, the host, you know, he'll be like, this is the greatest country on earth. Blah, blah, blah. Well, you're wrong, dude. <laughs> it's not even close, but whatever. You know, he gets a lot wrong with the history shit, too. But I I, I digress right there. Uh, you'll have to look all that shit up. But anyways, I never see these motherfuckers go to uh, anywhere in the United States. And I never see them go uh, into South America. Australia is the same way. They, I, I, there might have been, I don't know, there might have been at one time where they might have gone somewhere in South America, like Brazil or something, maybe. But I don't think it was Canada or Asia that did that. I think that was the American version. I know Australia didn't do it because they just stick in Australia. Um, and I I don't think I've ever seen Canada or Asia go to Australia either. Now, they did go to New Zealand once. Asia did. I know that. But uh, Asia is the same way. They don't go to different countries. They stay in Asia. 
I think they've gone to, like I said, maybe New Zealand and maybe Frankfurt, Germany. I think there was an episode where they went on one of the seasons where they went to Germany. But that's it. They they don't, I don't think any of them go to Africa. Uh, I, I definitely, well, maybe I take that back. I think I've seen seen them go to somewhere in Africa before in one season. I'm not, I can't quite remember, but I think they did go to Africa once. But most generally, they don't go to Africa. They don't go any into the Europe, Europe countries, uh, Eastern or Western European. They don't go to U.S. and they don't go to South America. I've never seen them do it. Not once. Um, Naturally, you have all the drama where some teams will fight all the time. However, every race, they have to have like one gay couple, the token gay couple. And, and, and the girls, the lesbians, they ain't that bad. But the gay men, oh my gosh. They fight, 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 fight. And then... Always, every time, every gay couple, men couple, they fight like crazy. And then, on top of that, uh, they pretend they're really nice to the other teens, but they're the first ones to talk shit behind their back and stab them in the back. Every time. They're rude. Completely rude people. Uh, anyways... And there are a couple of them women that I would just, woo, I'd want to, now, there's some guys that are complete dicks, too, to their girlfriends on the show, but there's some women on there that I'm, I would like, psh, woo, you got to go screaming, hollering, and throwing a hissy fit because you don't want to do a certain task or something. Get the fuck out of here. You know, some of them women, they expect the guy to do every single fucking task for them. Well, they do nothing. Oh, it really irritates me when they're all like, you need to carry my bag. It's just too heavy. I can't carry it. And they make the guy carry their bag all over the place. Well, they just, oh, I got the clue. A piece of paper. Give me a fucking break. Oh, that's so annoying. Them type of women. But anyways, um, Canada's all right for the most part. Um, I don't mind it. I, I didn't mind it. I'll let you know about season eight when it's done. Uh, Amazing Race Asia. Most of the, doesn't bother me for the most part. They're okay. Uh, they're not as good as the American version, obviously. I, I actually like the Australian version actually better. Even though they stay in Australia, I like it a little bit better than I do Asia and Canada. Uh, Alan Wu is kind of, he's the host for Asia. He's kind of like deadpan face most of the time uh, when he talks. I don't know. It's just, he's like stone face a lot. I mean, he hardly shows any emotion at all, which is weird, but whatever. Um, but yeah, they're all right. They're worth a watch. If you like The Amazing Race, go ahead and check out some of the other amazing races they're not bad they're okay although sometimes they gotta eat some pretty nasty shit especially the Asian version but anyways that's all I have to say on that let's move on to your B movie reviews all right, movie holics. This week is Action Week.
Now the first one I'm going to talk about uh, was suggested by a viewer. Uh, um, he said it was an action movie and then I looked it up and it does say action crime but even the the trailer says it's an action movie but honestly it's not an action movie it's a drama it pretty much is a drama and i wasn't sure if i'd seen this or not but once i started watching it, i was like oh okay I, I have seen this it's been years ago but i did watch it um i chose two sylvester stallone movies this week for you the first one because it was suggested to me and then I figured why not choose another Sylvester Stallone movie that I had never seen. Um, so the first one was done in 1989. It only made about 22 million so it did okay but it really didn't do that great and it was called Lock Up. Uh, now, Donald Sutherland co-stars with Sylvester Stallone in this. The story basically is Sylvester Stallone uh, is imprisoned because he went kind of like vigilante on some guys that uh, the police in his city wouldn't do anything about some type of gang that murdered an old man who was a friend of his taught him stuff about you know how to be a mechanic or some shit anyways so he's serving some uh some time for beating the shit and putting him in a hospital these punks he beat up or whatever that killed the old man um At some point in time, he was in a prison of Donald Sutherland. Donald Sutherland plays a warden, and he had a prison. And Sylvester Stallone, you know, I think it was something to do with the old man's funeral or some shit. His mentor. And he wanted to go to the funeral or some shit. And Donald Sutherland wouldn't let him. And he broke out. Escaped. Uh, the only person to ever escape from Donald Sutherland's prison. So it pissed Donald off. Made him look like a, a laughing stock amongst his peers. So at the beginning of the movie. Uh, Sylvester Stallone's. You know, finishing up his time for escaping as well. Uh, Donald Sutherland somehow gets him transferred to his new prison. Somehow he got a new prison. And he gets Sylvester Stallone transferred to his prison. Where he tries to torture him. Uh, and tries to get him to where he'll have to stay there in, indefinitely. Now... Sylvester Stallone makes a few friends in the prison. Uh, he the the warden does some shitty shit to him, you know, and then you know like torture, beat him up, that kind of shit. He even had a guard pretend that he was an inmate and that he was going to go. Uh, he was getting out in a couple of days and he told Sylvester Stallone he was going to go rape his girlfriend and kill her or whatever. Uh, he had, the warden had some inmates beat up on him too, that kind of shit. Uh, but in the end, he gets the warden to confess in front of this black captain and this captain arrests the warden. And then, you know, let's Sylvester Stallone finish off his time and then releases him and that's the end of the movie. 
Now, like I said, it's considered a crime action type film, but honestly, it was more drama. There wasn't really any action in the entire fucking movie. Uh, other than the fact of him getting tortured by the prison guards and the warden, you know. Like they'd beat up on him with some billy clubs or some shit a couple of times. But other than that, that's it. The only action part in the entire movie was when they're playing football in the middle of the movie, you know, fucking out in the, the yard, but it's all muddy and shit, and they're playing, he's playing football against some of the inmates that uh, the warden seeks, uh, the warden six on them, on him. Uh, but other than that, you know, that was the only type of action here was some football, you know, and it wasn't really all that action here. It was mainly the lamb constantly tackling him. That was pretty much it. So I wouldn't call this an action movie. I call it more drama. Even though it's labeled as action, it's not an action movie. It's a drama. The acting was, of course, good. You know, it, it was, the acting was just fine. And I love Donald Sutherland. I think he's a great actor. Sylvester Stallone, eh, he does okay. He, he doesn't bother me to watch one of his movies. He's just not the... I honestly never have never thought Sylvester Stallone was a, a really great, superb actor, you know. But he's okay. He doesn't bother me. Um, you know, he's, he's decent. Um... The movie's okay, but you gotta understand it's a drama. It's not an action. Uh, still, it's worth a one-time watch. It really is. Uh, two thumbs up. Decent movie. One-time watch. Uh, but other than that, if you're not really... If you're actually looking for some hardcore action, this isn't the movie for you. Alright, let's move on to the next one. The next one, uh, I've seen, uh, when I do certain searches for certain older movies, I've seen this, you know, sometimes in the list or some shit, but I'd never seen it. I'd never even heard of it. Uh, it was done in 1981, and it made about $19 million at the box office, which was okay for back then. It, it didn't do horrible. Uh, the movie's called Nighthawks. And it is kind of a crime action flick. Uh, in it, you have, of course, Sylvester Stallone. But then you also got Rutgerd Hauer, who plays the bad guy. He plays the villain. The terrorist, as they label him. And then Sylvester Stallone's partner is Billy D. Williams. You probably know him better as La Carissian from Star Wars. Uh, B-Ways. Billy D. Williams and Sylvester Stallone play two cops. Uh, they're on the undercover team. Uh, and they usually do like solo bust and shit. Uh, they have military backgrounds. So this terrorist who Interpol's after flees to America and gets plastic surgery. That's Roger, uh, uh, Rugger Howard. They are chosen to be on a attack squad locating this terrorist and taking him down or even taking him out they don't Interpol apparently doesn't care uh, they see, send an MI agent over to America to help try to train them uh, to go after him because the guy knows the terrorist better than anybody else 
So, uh, Roger Hauer, eventually Sylvester Sloan, just somehow, just magically got the gut feeling, even though he's had plastic surgery, that that must be him. He sees him in a dark nightclub where you can't hardly see anything because the lights flashing and it's dark. But somehow Sylvester Stallone, he spots him right away and says, oh, I got a gut feeling, Billy D. Williams, that that's thou our guy. Okay, whatever. So now he's been made. Uh, he has done a couple bombs already. Made a couple threats to the news. Uh, stations but now he's got Sylvester Stallone on his ass right so uh, eventually the guy that knows him so well from Interpol uh, he takes him out with a female associate of his and then they go capture a tram out in the middle of the air or whatever you know hanging there with all these UN representatives on the tram or some shit uh, they have this whole baby scene where he exchanges a baby or some shit with Sylvester Stallone and then you know he wants a bus brought to him so he, they can all get on the bus and take off well, when they go to transfer to the bus, they take out the female terrorist. And then all the representatives just lay flat on the ground. And they start shooting at the bus with Rugger Hauer in it. And he gets away inside the bus. And it goes off into the ocean or, or lake or canal or whatever. Wherever they're at. I think they're in New York. I don't, I can't quite remember. But it, yeah, I think so. Anyways, it, it goes in the canal in, in New York City. And Rugger Hauer gets away. They never find the body. But Sylvester Stallone's got a girlfriend. And Rugger Hauer took the time to get to know everything about Sylvester Stallone's character. So more than likely, he goes, Oh, I bet that's where he went. Sure enough, Rugger Hauer decides to go after his girlfriend. Shows up, he's getting ready to kill her. Boop! It's not his girlfriend, it's Sylvester Stallone in a wig, in a bathrobe. Says, what the fuck ever? And then he just blows Rugger Hour away. End of story. Done. Movie's over. They killed the bad guy. That literally, that's where it ends. He he blows the shit out of him when he was gonna attack him with a knife, and then he's dead, and that's the end of the movie. Um, it's an okay movie. I mean, for an action flick, it's all right. It's not bad. It's not horrible. But at the same time, it's just, it's so predictable, some of the shit that happens in the movie. You're just like, okay, whatever, you know. But, uh, of course, the acting's great. You got some great actors in this. I love Rugger Howard. Uh, uh. Rugger Hauer, he's he's great, great actor. Uh, I love a lot of his B-rated shit, even though some of it's pretty corny. Excellent actor. Uh, Bill D. Williams, of course, is a great actor too. And like you know how I feel about Sylvester. So the acting's not bad. There is some action in this movie, not a lot, but there is action. Way more in that lockup. Anyways. There is some action in this movie, so it's definitely an action movie. It's a cop movie, uh, crime, murder, mystery, terrorism type of shit. Um, was it good? It was all right. Was it bad? It's worth a one-time watch. Again, decent enough to at least watch it once. Um, I give it two thumbs up. It was a decent movie. Not bad. Okay. That's all I have for you. 
this week. Uh, if you have any thoughts about what I said earlier in the video, please leave your thoughts down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you have any suggestions of movies or maybe even television programs I may never have heard of, may never have seen, uh, leave your suggestions down in the comment section down below and I'll get to them as soon as I or get to reviewing them as soon as I can. So until next time, I told you you'd be told the truth and you've just been told. <laughs>